Hello, and welcome to Jaws on the NES. Please excuse my use of text-to-voice software, as a shark ripped out my vocal cords when I was swimming in the Atlantic. Jaws was made by LJN, and features much aquatic animal slaughter. The object of the game is to get as many shells as you can, and turn them in at the ports on the opposite sides of the overworld map, to raise your power level. Once your power level is high enough, you can attack the Great White and reduce its life bar, which engages you in the final battle. The game itself is very repetitive, there are only 4 enemies through the entire duration. Stingrays, Jellyfish, Baby Great White Sharks, and quote unquote, Jaws. The game seems to star some sort of horrible underwater eco-terrorist, as you dive in and destroy any living animal you see. Every so often, you get in your plane and drop bombs on jellyfish. It seems to me that the Great White is the hero of this game, protecting the ocean from a murderous psychopath such as your character. These underwater instances stop at random, it usually gives you around 1 to 2 minutes to kill and collect shells, before abruptly going back to the overworld screen. It should be noted that the phrase, you hit something, is a lie to cover up your terrible actions. The correct phrase would be, well, it's time to kill again. There isn't much to say about the same screen over and over again. Jaws sure was a great movie. The second one was okay too, I guess. The third one? I don't know. I remember watching it when I was young and being very confused about the whole idea of sharks breaking into a sea park. But then again, my opinion as a child isn't too valid, as I thought Jaws, the revenge was the best one of them all. What an idiot I was. Oh here we go. Dropping bombs on jellyfish for no good reason. These little angels dance elegantly through the water, enjoying life to the fullest, and it's up to us to make sure that never happens again. As far as I can tell, these stages are at random. The point of it being, the total amount of jellyfish you kill at the end of the bonus stage, you are awarded a little over half that amount in shells. Even though this game was completed within 15 minutes, it still drags on forever, and ever, and ever. It isn't a good game by any means, but I think I come back to it every so often for nostalgic reasons. There is a submarine in this game that you can pick up, but it did not appear in this playthrough for me. Though unless you want to beat the game in about 6 minutes, it isn't necessarily needed. The starfish that appear when you kill something are for points, and the crabs increase the diver's swimming speed. The first upgrade of the game. This is the shark tracker, a sonar that will let you know when the shark is getting closer to you as he is always out there in the ocean and always tracking you down. This is your main goal of the game. Get from one port to the other, while spending shells to upgrade your power. 
Once you run into the shark, he will be in the underwater screen chasing you down. You can attack him, but your beginning power is far too low to do any real damage to him. You need to aim for power level 4 or 5 to be able to take him out. Of course, the higher level you want to buy, the more shells it will cost. Here is a shallow stage, one of the only differences you will find in this game from everything else. It's more difficult as you have less time to avoid the jellyfish, and even more so when it's an all jellyfish level. Our first baby shark has arrived. I find them more of a threat than the bigger one, for reasons I will show you when he arrives. Killing a baby shark gives you a shell, no questions asked. Here he is. When he hits your boat, you have a short time limit to drop bombs on him before he knocks you into the water. And this is why he is not so threatening. If you stay at the surface, he cannot eat you, only swim under you, allowing you 100% safety from him if you are not too deep. His health will replenish a good amount if you don't kill him, eventually making you hunt him down, rather than him hunting you. This is the first of many shark games I will be playing on this channel, because they are terrible yet majestic animals. Even if they love to eat vocal cords, I am still a fan. Oh dear. The zigzag jellyfish. This is by far the most difficult thing about this game. I tried a playthrough prior to this, and they killed me three times, giving me a game over. It's no wonder the Great White is more endangered than the Tiger at this point. I would love to see some kind of raw mech of this game. Maybe one with a mega low dawn. Something actually challenging, or just a lot of different adult great whites. Something to break the monotony. Sorry, I hiccuped. When 
I was young, I was able to hook my Nintendo up to a movie theater sized screen at my mother's work, and this is the game I chose to play. Any game on such an awesome scale should be much better, but this one was not. It's time to gear up, and put this shark, and its video game, out of their misery. I just wish we could hurry it up, and not be forced to sit here forever killing fish. We're ready to gain one more level and destroy that shark. Oh jeez. Well. Let's kill some more time. Did you ever see the original ending for Jaws, The Revenge? It's ridiculous. They hand painted a little toy boat and a plastic shark to use for the explosion scene. It's one of the worst things ever put on film. Seriously, look up, Jaws, The Revenge, original ending cut, and watch. It's atrocious. The quality drop between the first Jaws and the fourth Jaws is about as deep as the Marianas Trench. Finally, we have reached power level 6. It's time to put this beast down. The final battle of Jaws is taken from the ending of Jaws, The Revenge, which came out the same year as this game. However, to get to that, we need to defeat his life bar right here, right now. Poor little baby came in to save its daddy. Oh well, too bad. Here's to the extinction of the great whites. I have to admit, this screen of the game always generates some excitement, and I think the music helps a bit. If this game deserves any credit, it's for this part alone. There we have it. We killed a shark, for some reason. And then we fly off into the sunset. Not really the most cinematic ending, but it sends its message, we were only here to kill. The game itself holds some nostalgic clout for me, personally, but all in all, a video game should not be easily completed in under 15 minutes. The world record for this game being beaten is a little under 4 minutes, if I recall. But, I'm not here for good games, easy games or hard games. I'm here for shark games. Thank you for watching my first shark game. Please check back for more, and even better. Please suggest some lesser known shark games for me to try out.